Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Hey, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper and welcome back to my channel. What is the most important consideration when you're hanging a product such as grass cloth or a natural product whereby the seams are very visible? In my opinion, the primary consideration when you're hanging such a product is where the seams fall, since they're so visible. Furthermore, more importantly than where do the seams fall, the greater consideration when you're hanging such a product in a small environment, such as a powder bath, which I'll show you in a moment, the primary consideration is the primary wall. I'm working in a small powder bath. And when you open the door, you want to put the seam in the center of the wall, regardless of any other consideration. If, you, if your seam is off center, it will be seen by everybody who enters the room and it will be noticed. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, it's a fine natural product. Look at that, look at that shimmering effect. The worst thing you can do to this wall covering is to get water on it or paste. You, you just, you can't get it out. And so you have to take your time. But look at the beauty of the shimmering effect. Isn't that gorgeous? If you hang grass cloth on this wall after entering this small bathroom, you want your seam in the dead center. Now I commented to some folks on Instagram from Philip Jeffries, and I, I politely politely indicated to them that the wall on which they hung their grass cloth manifested a seam and the seam was hung in the center of the wall, but the seam was visible coming down the staircase. So picture this being the center of the wall coming down a staircase and only this, only this much of the wall was showing from here to here. Well, they hung their grass cloths in the, in the center point of the distance between this corner and that corner. So when you were coming down the staircase, this is what you saw. And the seam was over here. Even though it was correctly placed in the center of here to here, the visual field only allowed you to see what you're looking at. And it bothered me. And I politely suggested to them, I said, oh, you, you know, I would have hung it over here. What do you think? You know, you know, like from one professional to another, because I can tell you something. If somebody would have shared such an expert opinion with me when I began hanging grass cloth, I would have said, thank you so much. Thank you. But some people can't be told anything. And I'm not knocking Philip Jeffries. In fact, as you know from this video, this is a Philip Jeffries product. But anyway, you know, some people just don't want to hear it. And so, you know, they remain ignorant. Uh, I am the king of mistakes, so I'm here on my channel to show do-it-yourselfers how to hang wallpaper. 
This is not the channel for everybody who knows everything already. This is for the folks who are inquisitive as yours truly was when he began doing everything. And I couldn't stop asking enough questions. So the lesson for this segment of the video is that the primary wall will have the center with the seam. Your corners are seams regardless. If there's no seam in there, your corner is intellectually to the person seeing it, they perceive it as, as a corner. So they're looking for the center to be here. Now, when you're hanging grass cloth, guess what? Your wallpaper is gonna come out the same amount on this side and on this side. So it's a win-win. As opposed to if you had what's called a drop match. Well, you have a big flower here, then you got one here, and the next one is over here. So it doesn't give you the same visual harmony with a drop match as the one I'm suggesting that you have from this, okay? Okay, any questions, please leave it at the bottom. When you're cutting this product or something very thick that's very thick you want to put a steel smoother steel guide in the corner you see how thick that is that's thicker than an eighth of an inch it's not three sixteenths but it's certainly going to cover the corner, leaving wallpaper in the corner, and leaving me wallpaper on this wall. Because when I detach this from this at the corner, I'm going to take this and put it over this in the corner. If you don't cut this corner, that sharp corner will become this over time. And it will lift off of the wall. This is like taking a hardcover book and trying to fit it in a corner with hairspray. Eventually it's gonna come up. Let me cut it. So I'm gonna put my, my smoother on there. I know I said steel, but I'm not gonna cut this up like you might. If you have to do it yourself, you wanna get a steel square, 10 inch taping knife. Drag it down, cut on this side of your smoother, not that side. As I'm cutting, do you see how the wallpaper is in the corner? It doesn't stop on this side. It goes into the corner and brings me onto this wall. It's very important. You wanna have wallpaper under this when you move this over. After you do your cut all the way down, you wanna use a plumb bob, a laser level, or some other leveling device to make sure that this piece is plumb. Because if it's crooked, you're in trouble. These slots have to be level. And so this level line is perpendicular to this perfectly which means we have we're square so you want to keep your wallpaper square over here and look that's after cutting it's pretty good the space after the laser level to the right looks pretty consistent to me all the way up so we have a nice corner here very nice don't you agree so i'm going to lift it up push it on top of this wallpaper otherwise you're going to have that and we can't have that. And all you're going to be doing, gently pushing it over, you want to get rid of that black line. Once you get rid of it, that's it. Don't push it too much further. See? And 
At the top, I was a little off plumb, so I took it off in the corner. You can't have a crooked edge here. It's gonna throw off the next sheet. And so my, my plumb line manifested more meat over here, so I cut it off over here so that the next sheet is plumb. So here's a suggestion. Get rid of this piece, throw it in the garbage. Throw it out. Ask your customer, hey, you mind if I throw out this expensive wallpaper? I'm serious, I'm not joking. Yeah, go ahead, throw it out. Because then you can get a nice piece, 36 inches, that falls. Uh, let's see, where's our pencil mark? My pencil mark. The next piece will fall right here. See that mark? So if you eliminate that piece, it'll fall over here. But you won't have this seam here, right up against the corner. It's a consideration that you may want to make. But here's the problem with that. And this is why I'm not doing it. It's such a small room. My next piece is never going to meet up. This stuff is natural. These box, these lines are not equidistant. You might have an inch and a quarter here, an inch and three sixteenths, blah, blah, blah. The next piece will not meet up. Someone's going to be brushing their teeth and see that this doesn't meet up. That's why I didn't do it. But if you're in a big room, you may want to consider getting rid of this piece so that you don't have uh, this issue going on. Just a consideration. You're the judge. You determine what's best in your case. When joining the seam from this piece to our piece after the corner, we see the next seam here. And we know that it's going to be visible. But you need to push it down so she doesn't stand out proud. Like right there. Now I'm hitting this with the soft part of my hand. And I don't recommend that as the means by which to make the seams be flush. But I want to show you what pushing down the seams actually does. It makes them perfect to the best of the ability of a natural product to be perfect because they do stand out. This is stiff material. So let me get the roller and show you that even a cheap roller that you would get at the box store where you get wallpaper supplies will suffice. So this is my roller and you can get this at your wallpaper supply store for $475. I'm only kidding. If you mention my name, they'll charge you $475. Now, it's tricky when you're doing seams like this for the first time. Here's why. You don't want too much paste on your edges. From here to here, you want to use about a third less of paste than you do everywhere else. And to combat against your edges drying prematurely, paste them last when you're putting paste on this type of material. You're going to go lighter on the edges in order that the paste does not ooze out when you affix the seams in place. And so you want to paste them last so they will be disinclined to dry. Okay. And that would be an industry standard seam for this type of material.
your hanging grass paper, thick, rough grass paper in corners. Okay, you know what this is. This is the side of a, of a closet, a bathroom door, whatever. <laughs> this is the trickiest part of the job. How do you do it? Well, you have to simulate a corner here. I'm pushing my paper right into that corner and, and, and telling that paper, stay there and then give me a 90 degree angle. That's what I'm doing. But I'm making sure that I hold my seam. Watch what I'm gonna do. So while I hold my hand on this, keeping the seam intact, I push that way with my smoother. Again, because if I don't hold my seam down, I'm gonna lose it. It's gonna be an eighth of an inch. It's gonna be perfect over here. It's gonna be a gap here. Don't let it happen to you. Okay. I have my, my paper in this corner. Now here's the thing. This wallpaper corner, this simulated corner, is not all the way back. So we can't cut it against this, this edge here because it'll fall short. We have to get the wallpaper in there. Let me show you what I mean. I just trimmed it at the top. You see this extra piece here? Watch this. I push my wallpaper back. You see how I need this extra here? Because it's gotta fill in what you see in that gap there. You see that? And so this is not a conventional procedure uh, that you would use to cut paper, okay? This stuff is very unforgiving. Uh, if you're gonna spend lots of time, do it in this type of situation so you don't mess it up. So as I push with this, with my other hand, I'm lifting this up so that this corner is not impeded by the wallpaper attaching itself to this. So I hold this up and then I put pressure into this corner and then my wallpaper goes in there. You see that? You see what I'm doing here? You see how I'm filling the gap there? Okay, you see how the wallpaper's going in? It's the only way you can do it with this stuff. Okay, see that? I'm pushing it against that corner and getting it in there. Now I'm literally pushing it in with my fingers so that I don't cut it short. And then I'm gonna slice it right up against here. You know, in the camera, my hands look really dirty, but they're not. Okay, now with a sharp blade. This stuff is hard to cut like this. Okay. Don't go too far to cut that. But. Gotta be aggressive with it. See how it's choppy? Because we're going against the woven grain of this stuff. You know? It's like when you cut wood, right? You go with the green to make it easy, right? Okay. Oh boy, does it get hard. None of this will be visible. Okay, let's get that in there. Okay, I'm pushing it in again. How are we doing? Good. It's a pain, no doubt. I just took an inch of the blade off because I want a new sharp section of the shaft. You're not just using the tip of it, please. Look, look how much of the blade we're using. So you, you know, you wanna go through this whole shaft of the breakaway, okay? This way it remains sharp, see? You know, this stuff dulls the blade. Okay, okay, I'm gonna push that in. Okay. Okay, let's 
continue. Wipe my hands. Get that in there. Okay. Now, here's a trick. Watch this. I'm pushing up against that top. Look where my bottom is. Dan Childs has a great tool for this. Okay, where paper hangs, not magicians, make our lives easier. I sliced it all the way down here and stopped right there. Fortunately for me, there was a natural seam right there. So now I'm gonna plumb this. We're almost perfectly straight, if not completely unnecessary to adjust this, but we gotta hide the seam. See, but that's why we put this into the corner and then put this over it by about an eighth of an inch. Let's move it over. Okay. Sometimes little fibers come up from the backing and give the impression that you seem as dirty, but it's not. You just have to pull them out either with a clean stainless steel scraper or your fingernails. Okay. okay. Now, if your seams aren't meeting up, my fingernails are not dirty. That's that is the camera. Okay. I just want you to know, clean hands here, these are clean. We're gonna do a karate chop. To get the seams perfect. Don't do this.
So now you see the importance of symmetry on a small wall like this in a bathroom. Have to be centered. Otherwise, it will throw off the human eye and it'll look really strange. So this is the main wall. You want to be right in the middle with your, with your seam. And that's what we're at. We're right in the middle. You could eliminate this as we spoke earlier. Your choice if you have enough wallpaper. If you want to eliminate the look of the nine inch piece. We came around, we continued very beautifully. A beautiful product. We showed you how to get the wallpaper in that corner without creating a mess of a cut. Okay. We did our splice over here. Can't see it. We also did our splice to do our fake out or joining the, the first sheet and the last sheet. And we cut it right there. And that's it. If you have any questions about hanging this product, please let me know if I can answer it. I will. Please let me know how you handle this stuff. What do you do? Okay.